what is going on guys we are back in the crack pack server and it's raining out it's thunderstorming out it's uh it's a depressing day but it's actually a very exciting episode now i've been working for like four hours this morning on making this one contraption it combines a buttload of mods all to do one very simple thing that i am too lazy to continue doing now this is for the witchery mod and i'm gonna build up some hype because it's right behind me there's also a zombie that's here so you know what we'll do we'll turn down the sound a little bit first okay so turn around and boom so it might not look like much outside but there's a lot of stuff going on behind here and basically what this does is it takes the tree farm that we have out there that we've been working on and it puts all of the stuff that it gets into either uh, barrels or into essences or fumes or whiffs or anything like that so it's all for getting just these f basically five or six different uh, basic things that you get from saplings, the witchery saplings. That's all it does. This huge complicated system is all for that. So I'm going to go through this entire thing and it's going to be really complicated. But we will start uh, at the beginning. So once you have the tree farm set up out there, which is really simple, you just use a harvester and a planter. You put it filtered into an ender chest. So once you have that done, that's when it comes to this whole setup in here. So the ender chest comes, you can see it right back inside there. It's in there, and all that happens back there is, let me get, uh, I need free hand. You have a pneumatic servo attached to an item duct coming out, and all it does is it pulls out any type of sapling that's in there. You're going to collect wood and saplings inside the ender chest. You only want the saplings to come out. That's the only thing that comes through this item duct, and it just puts them straight into the witch's oven. You put it in the top, and it'll plop them right where they need to go in the witch's oven. So now, there's two other things that need to be put into a witch's oven to fully automate it. And this system is fully automated, don't get me wrong. So you need clay jars and a sort of uh, fuel. And for this one, we're going to use charcoal. So the charcoal part is really simple. All the charcoal is, is we make all the wood that we get into charcoal. And... Obviously, like that we have here, it produces an excess, which is what this is for. Now, we're able to turn off both the clay jar production and the charcoal production, but you really don't need to worry about the clay jar production at all because you're going to need as many of those as you can get. But both of these, just remember, both of these get put in the bottom of the witch's, or the, yeah, the witch's oven. So just remember that because we are going to go back, and I will explain how we make both the charcoal and the clay jars. So we are going to start with the charcoal. The charcoal is really simple. All we have is this is the ender chest we were looking at before. You can see over here we have the pneumatic servo that pulls out all of the different saplings. So on this side it pulls out the rest. It pulls out the different types of wood that we have. Now you have to do this just because there's an off chance that if you don't have this pulling out only wood that you will pull out some saplings and that will clog up the redstone furnace so you do need a pneumatic servo attached to this and you're gonna set this so that it has high redstone control and you're gonna do that because you're gonna hook it up to the wireless receiver and when it's off like it is out here as you can see we have it off out here so it is not going to pull any of the wood out of this chest when we get it because we don't need any more charcoal but if we did have it on it would pull the wood out of this chest put it into the redstone furnace, make it into charcoal just through the use of power and we have a renewable power source. It pumps it up the item duct and it pumps it straight into the barrel. Now down here, it's, I'm not going to show it because actually you know what, I can't show it. It's, uh, it's going to be a little bit to get to it, but I will show it. If we come up here, you can see that we have our two different barrels and in each one, um, mind this in each different barrel we have a pneumatic servo attached and this one only lets charcoal go in and the other one only lets clay jars go in essentially uh, and I only have that because on the off chance that we do need to like use up a clay jar we don't want these getting mixed up and pneumatic servos don't cost that much so that's very simple and now we can go to the complicated clay jar production so Etho made a video about this and his was for a slightly different purpose. He wanted clay and bricks. 
So ours can be a little bit less complicated in that aspect because we don't need it to make bricks, but we do need it to have a couple extra steps to make the clay jars. So I'll explain the initial system that gets us the clay. So you have the igneous extruder, and what that does is it makes cobblestone infinitely at the, it doesn't even need power actually, and then it has it set so the cobblestone goes down, it gets put into the pulverizer, which uses power just to make the cobblestone into sand. Now, I don't have anything set up for the gravel to go to, but you can just put that into a trash can or anything, or into a barrel. Uh, but because I have such a small area here, I just take it out by hand because it doesn't really produce much gravel. So we have the sand going out to the right of it, which puts it into the induction smelter. And the induction smelter takes both one sand and then two of whatever you want to pulverize. Pulverizing iron is perfectly fine. And it makes it into two iron ingots and has a 25% chance of making slag. Now the slag is what we're going to use to make the clay but to make infinite slag you need to have a consistent flow of iron so what this does right here is it basically pulverizes the iron and once two things of iron are pulverized it comes down to the induction smelter smelts that into two iron again and then it just sends it back through in a loop and right here you can see I have to get something off my hotbar you can see that we just have a pneumatic servo and you don't even need this actually but I just have it there you just need it to be toggled by a redstone signal because if you ever wanted to turn off the clay jar production you could just hit the switch and by turning this off right here this pneumatic servo it turns off the whole clay jar production so if you ever wanted to turn it off that's how you do it but basically the idea is this whole contraption right here just makes slag and it's got a 25 percent chance of making it for every two iron dust that it makes into iron bars so it doesn't make it that often you may need more than one of these but for now it seems like it's uh, consistent enough to keep me about full with clay jars so once it makes the slag it goes out the bottom and that goes down here and along with this barrels contents which is usually dirt but it doesn't have anything in it right now it brings it all the way to the back right here and it gets a little clogged up back here, a little complicated. Make some room. Okay, so this pipe right here is the one that has the dirt and the slag in it. And that comes back here to the, uh, get a better view of it. Comes back here to the cyclic assembler. Now you're going to have to make a schematic for clay. And the, what you're going to use for the clay is one water bucket, two slag, and one dirt. Now, I'll show you guys the recipe that I'm talking about here. If you have clay, this is the recipe. There's basically no other recipes for making clay. And unfortunately, the only thing that you actually have to add to this system is dirt. So everyone has extra dirt. You don't need to worry about that. So you can see I have a bunch of excess dirt in here that I just threw in. So if I fill up this whole barrel, uh, that'll just be the overflow dirt for this. But basically, you have an aqueous accumulator over the cyclic assembler. So instead of using a water bucket, it just uses the water that's put in the cyclic assembler. And then you have all the slag put in here along with the dirt. And that's all it takes to make two clay. You have the output. Output it to the left, to the other cyclic assembler. And this one doesn't even need water. The only thing this one has is a schematic for soft clay jars. Now I'm sure you guys know what the soft clay jars look like, but in case you don't, we can look at it right here. The only way to make them is just with the use of four clay and that produces four soft clay jars. So that's really simple. You just have that and then again it puts it out to the left. When it comes out to the left it goes to another redstone furnace and the redstone furnace just cooks them, makes them into regular clay jars. Whoops. And then over here we have the item duct pulling out the regular clay jars, bringing them back over and it connects it up here to the item duct that once again will go up here and it goes to this barrel right over here and you can see click on the pneumatic servo that it has whitelisted clay jars so that is what we use to produce the clay jars here and the charcoal here and all of that works together to make um, 
all of the different uh, fumes and essences and whiffs over here. Once they're produced in the witch's oven, you can pull it out the back. Now this pulls out both the wood ash and whatever it produces that's extra, the whiff or essence or fume. It pulls it out the back and it just runs it back here. And I will break down this wall so we can see it a little bit better. Brings it down here, up, and this does not need to be here. This is just because it's next to it. And then it brings it up and it stores it in one of these six. And if you have the uh, if you have them full, it'll go automatically to the one it needs to go to. And because they're barrels, they'll obviously never get full, which is why I have this dimensional anchor back here so that it stays loaded when I'm not here. And that takes into account this whole contraption. So this runs by putting one here and setting it to a 3x3. Three three. It'll run this whole machine without you even being here. Now, when we turn this off, because we don't need more charcoal, it's going to start filling up these. Now these barrels are just to store wood. You don't really need this wood because honestly there's nothing special about most of this wood except for maybe the Rowan wood. Uh, but it, it can't hurt to have the wood, especially because you can use it for anything, uh, not just witchery things. So if we go in back here, I should put a door there, but if we come in back here, you can see that we have the uh, wireless receiver and that is the same as the charcoal. It's the same um, like wi wireless receiver setting as the charcoal. So when this is off, it turns off the charcoal production, but in here we invert it. So when it's not producing charcoal, it's pulling out the wood from here and putting it into one of these five barrels. So that just helps uh, keep everything nice and organized. It keeps the ender chest completely empty in case you go away for a while. Uh, and it won't get over or it won't overflow if you're producing, you know, if you're producing charcoal. If you're not producing charcoal, so you don't have to worry about it at all. And then um, the item duct we have on here. Uh, there's no real need to have the item duct on here, but I was having some problems before. So if you want to prevent, you know, certain types of wood from getting pulled out, uh, if you want to only make certain types of wood turned into charcoal, you can do that by putting a pneumatic servo on both the item duct whoops on both the item duct right here and the item duct in there and just make it so only one is pulled out for the charcoal and then the rest are pulled out in here whoops we took the spruce wood so that's it guys that is the system that took forever to make you guys can't even imagine how long this took to make uh, it's way overly complicated for what we're doing with it but honestly it doesn't take any work you can just sit back and let it do what it has to do so guys all in all it is an extremely effective system uh, I made it this morning it's only been running for you know two hours maybe uh, obviously did have some backup from the other day when we were running it and that was all made into this right here but you know it is extremely effective we don't have any cooking now but um you can see how it fluctuates the clay jars and you know eventually there you know those will drop and then they'll go back up but the system all around is uh, pretty much foolproof and if you make it just like this you should be perfectly fine and you should never really have to worry about these basic fumes ever again um, the only one I don't have in here is the essence of the horned one that's just regular oak saplings I may throw one in soon if you do that you can replace this wood ash put the wood ash over there and then have the essence of the horned one right there in the bottom if you want to keep it you know six barrels and then six barrels uh, other than that though there's really nothing else for this episode guys I hope you enjoyed it if you have any questions or suggestions on how to improve this you can feel free to post those in the comments if you like the video feel free to subscribe and I am sorry that this was a shorter episode but the main goal was just to explain this system to anyone that wanted to make it sort of uh, in a tutorial like way but uh, it is on the crack pack server so we are going to post it as a crack pack episode and um, for any of my fellow witches on the server I will assist you if you need uh, putting one of these up or if you don't want it feel free to use mine whenever you need basically talking about you chillum not gonna help anyone else if cat wants help he can screw off um, but yeah I'll talk to you guys later